You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts, Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionPit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash VIX today to learn more. And now get ready to hit the auction block. All right, everybody. That music means yes, we are back, back in your lives, back here talking about options, back for your bi-weekly options extravaganza known around the globe. As the option block. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the optionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever engaging, at least we tend to think so, Options Insider Radio Network. Hope you all had a great weekend. Maybe you watched some wrestling. It was WrestleMania weekend after all. So uh, you'd be forgiven, even if you're not a diehard 80s wrestling fan. Watching a little bit of the old wrestling this weekend. Some big news in that arena. We're going to get to that in a second. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever insightful, ever engaging network. And of course, all we ask is three things at the end of the day. First off, if you like what you hear, make sure you're listening to the full network. B, throw a rating on whatever platform you're getting this fine content on. Then, of course, if you want even more in your lives, and hey, who doesn't? Then theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Going to give them away the pro trading crate for March soon. So stay tuned for that. That should be a fun one here. But before we get to all that fun listeners, we are now joined on the Monday show by the uncle of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Management, as well as a surprise switcheroo, a guy who's actually got two points somehow in our 80s wrestling trivia game. He is the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Gibbonazzi from OptionPit.com. I introduce them now because it's time, listeners. For them to warm up their buzzers because it is time for our 80s wrestling trivia challenge. All right, there we go. A little Merv Griffin special. Of course, he produced Jeopardy back in the day. <laughs> Old throwback there. But yes, it is time, listeners. I said we're coming off the heels of the biggest event in the wrestling world, WrestleMania. Sold out SoFi Stadium two nights in a row, like 80 plus thousand people each night. Wrestling, doing some numbers out. They showed some of the scenes from it. <laughs> some of the, so it's a huge stadium, obviously. Some of those seats at the top, you, you, the ring was not even an ant. I don't know what people were doing buying it. They were not cheap, the tickets to this WrestleMania, uh, to see literally nothing. I mean, wrestling is not a good giant stadium sport. It's good for a nice arena. 15, 20,000 people. Once you get beyond that, it's hard to see what the hell's going on. It's like MMA, the same thing. Oh, surprise. Those two worlds colliding today. 
We'll get to that in a little bit. But now it is time for our 80s wrestling trip. I said we just came off the heels of WrestleMania, the show of shows, the showcase of the Immortals, the biggest event in the wrestling season. We talked recently on this very segment about WrestleMania 1. Featured Hogan and Mr. T against Roddy Piper and Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff. Talk about him too often. So that was a fun one. Now we're going to fast forward a few years to another WrestleMania. Everyone thinks of WrestleMania 3. Hogan and Andre, the great clash, the slam heard around the world. That really kind of set WWE onto another trajectory into the modern era. Huge fame out there. But it was another WrestleMania. WrestleMania 6. Were the two titans of all time, the undoubtedly most famous wrestler of all time, and undoubtedly the greatest wrestler of all time, hint, hint, collided in just the ultimate unstoppable force versus the immovable object. It was just a battle for the seasons, a battle for the centuries out there. Two of the greatest to ever lace up the boots, going head to head, uh, mixing, combining titles for the first time, too. It was, I won't say what the titles were. Maybe I'll give it away a little bit out there. But let's put it out there now. WrestleMania 6. Who was that main event? Who was fighting in the main event at WrestleMania 6? Buzz. All right, Mr. Uncle Mike. I had a feeling you would go for it before the (laughs) Rock Buster. (laughs) Go for it, sir. I mean, I was kind of nervous. You actually buzzed. (laughs) Oh, I will go with Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior. Yes, you are correct, sir. Clearly the most famous against the greatest wrestler of all time. What could lose there? Uh, what were what were the two forces at play there for a bonus? Hulk Hogan said it in his... And it was, he'll see which force is more powerful. I mean, like the, the two belts on the line? Because it was the inter, the Warrior had the Intercontinental belt and then Hogan had the championship belt. Is that what you're talking about? Those are the two belts. I was going to ask that too. So you get a half point bonus point for that. There you go. Uh, but also the two forces. What two forces would collide? See which one would stronger. Oh, the immovable. Fo- oh, hold on. Let me think of this. The most powerful force versus the immovable object. Oh, <laughs> shoot. I, I, I don't know that one. No, nah, it was a Hulkamania. They were going to see which was more powerful. Hulkamania versus I think it was like Warrior Nation or something like whatever they called it. Warrior Spirit. I'll have to look up the exact terminology. But it was something along those lines. That, that was what was going to collide in the main event of WrestleMania. Uh, a bonus point. I'll give this to Andrew. A bonus half point. Mr. Rock Lobster, Hulk Hogan or Ultimate Warrior? Who won? Take a guess. Uh, has to be Hulk Hogan. He always won. You'd think so, but no. This was the first time <gasps> Hulk Hogan was pinned cleanly in the ring for the first time in six years by the greatest wrestler of all time, the Ultimate Warrior, of course. So, uh, you know what? I should have known you were throwing me some kind of trick question like that. I was trying to give you a yeah. chance. 50 50. 50 50 swing at the bat for the Rock Lobster there. Alas, but you're right, Mr. Uncle Mike. Also combining the IC title, and which is the greatest title of all time, of course, and the WWF title at the time. They had to strip him eventually because the, back then you couldn't carry two, apparently. It was illegal. Uh, so, yes. Jack Tunney would not allow that. Jack Tunney, you're right. Those were the Jack Tunney days. No Jack Tunney. So, one and a half points for Tucson. Respectable. A goose egg for the Rock Lobster. If I had known you were coming, I might have tried to throw an extra bonus. I mean, I had Hulk Hogan in it for you. There's not much more I can do beyond that. <laughs> I, I, I did. And, you know, and I was and I was looking for him for the win because he always won. I just remember him always winning. That's why he was the greatest. In the 80s, he was a pretty safe bet to win. Yes. Yeah, so that, I don't fault you for that. He's probably a 80 Delta, at least, if you ever guess Hulk, any match with Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Got to go Hogan. But uh, yes, this was the run moment. Warrior Nation. Warrior power was more powerful. You know, at the end of the day, Warrior. Greatest of all time. Fight me on it as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody. Welcome to the trading block, the portion of the show where we break down what the hell is going on out there in the markets. A lot of different news buffet in the market at once. Saudi and Russia. There's a tag team for the ages right there. Combining for some production cuts on crude, sending crude skyrocketing again. Uh, the big news on the domestic business front, of course, our old friends, WWE, announcing right on the heels of WrestleMania. It looks like they're going to be acquired by the parent company of UFC. So now UFC and WWE coming together. Good old Ari from Entourage now runs, well, probably is about to run UFC and WWE. Uh, so it's going to be Ari at the top. And then Vince and someone else is co-chairman right below them. 
And then uh, below them, Dana White, and I believe Nick Khan from WWE. So, yeah, going to have UFC and WWE under the same umbrella. How crazy is that? So that's the big news rocking the business world here. All that translating into a very mixed bag on the session today. s and is kind of sitting this one out. They're like, yeah, we're unched right now. Had a little bit of a move earlier in the session. Tried to rally earlier. Then they kind of came for it a little bit. Broke 4,100 ever so briefly. Now hanging out pretty much on straight around 4110. Dow saying, you know what, kid? I like this. I'm off to the races, up three quarters of a percent. NASDAQ saying, no, no, I'm scared of all this. I'm going to go back in my bed. Off nearly a full percent, about 0.9%. So very much a tale of three different markets out there today. That means VIX, when we kicked off the show, at about a 19 even, down about one point from last show. VIX, 85, down about five points from where it was this time last show. A VXX, 44 and a quarter, down about one and three quarters points. You know, VXX, I said it's on Volvo. Let's start paying more attention to it. I know I said I washed my hands of it, but when you reverse split it to north of a 50, it kind of forces your hand. You kind of have to pay attention to it again. Look how much juice is coming out of this thing. Oh, man, imagine if UVXY or UVIX did this, how fantastic it would be. But alas, they did not. A UVXY at four and a half, down about three tenths of a point. SVIX, 16 and three quarters up. Of course, it's the inverse product up. About two thirds of a point. Ubix, 15 and a half, down about one and a quarter. And VolQ, 22 and a quarter, down about half a point. Uncle Mike, as our victor, we will start with you, sir. First off, any enduring memories of that Titanic clash between the Warrior and the Hulkster? B, what are your thoughts of uh, UFC and WWE getting together? They're going to be spun off as one tradable entity now, going to combine the stock of UFC or, I guess, what Endeavor Parent and WWE and make it this one tradable entity. So that's kind of interesting. And then see what else is catching your eye in this weird market today, sir. Yeah, so let's talk about A to begin with. Uh, you know, I, I do think that the Warrior didn't sell himself as good as he could have because he had a lot of potential, and I think he really could have been uh, the next Hulk Hogan, but um, it's, it's unfortunate. I liked the Ultimate Warrior. I thought he, he had a lot of high energy with the song going into the ring. Dun, 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 dun. Let's say he had he some did. personal failings that held him back. <laughs> he did. And so I think that um, yeah, you know, if, if he could have... Now that I think about it, if he'd have had Bobby the Brain Heenan as his manager, he'd have been beyond Hulk Hogan. Bobby the Brain Heenan could have helped him out, I think. Would you agree on that, Mark? Yeah, Warrior was about 90% entrance, which as a kid, I was here for it. I loved the pyro, the explosions. Him coming out against Andre the Giant, one of the highlights of my childhood, watching those two fight in person. It was amazing down there. I believe it was in New Haven. Maybe Hartford, one of those. Maybe Hartford. One of those two. But yes, epic clash for the ages. But yeah, I even saw recently uh, Undertaker talking about Warrior, and he said his entrance was so explosive. By the time he got to the ring, he was done. He was gas. He had nothing left. <laughs> it, it was something else. <laughs> so he was all entrance, but damn, what an entrance. Go ahead, sir. It was quite the entrance. Yeah, Bobby the Brain could have helped him out if, he, if he'd have gotten a good manager. So for all you young wrestlers out there, um, make sure that you get a good manager. Like if, if he'd have had... A, Jimmy Hart, Bobby Heenan, they could have helped him out a lot, I think. But um, it is what it is. But unfortunately, uh, uh, it was a he he had the flash in the pan status just because he just he he just that's just how it was, unfortunately for him. Uh, in terms of WWE and UFC, uh, I mean, I think that the UFC apparently they're trying to get some integrity in their business now by getting. Uh, WWE involved with them so they can those actually, darn shoot fights not respectable at all yeah I mean it's like they, they want to get real real matches in there now so that's why they need to get the WWE Vince can help them out and teach them how to fight for real so I mean that's probably how that's no, I'm kidding of course but uh, I think that's going to be an interesting mix because um, when you have certain ultimate fighters that have done both um, I think that it, it could be an interesting it, it, it could be an interesting merger in that um, WWE could look for talent in the UFC area. And um, I think it's going to be very interesting to see where that goes. I, I like the idea and I'm, and I'm intrigued also by the fact that Vince is still going to be around. So it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. So I don't know if it's going to be a success or not, but it will be interesting. Anything with professional wrestling is interesting. So the other thing it kind of makes me think of, it's like when um, Donald Trump was becoming a politician, not trying to be political. Uh, you can say he's a successful or unsuccessful, not trying to go down that route. 
But the fact that vi- that Donald Trump does have WWE experience, that does make him interesting. And anything that WWE has its hands on in any way, shape, or form, it will be interesting. That is a gear. I believe he's the only president to be in the WWE Hall of Fame. So there you go. Wow. That's impressive. That is impressive. So um, that's a, just a, another one of the only president to ever's that he has on, <laughs> yes. His, uh, yes. on his docket. <laughs> Most of them um, highly dubious. That one kind of okay. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, in terms of this market, I'm really surprised that um, we're having as much movement as we are, quite frankly. Uh, It's a pre-holiday week. We do have Easter coming up on Sunday. We got Good Friday coming up on Friday. And um, I really don't see a lot of movement in this market this week. So I I could be wrong, of course. But um, I think people are uh, big money is looking to head out for the weekend a little bit early. And a lot of times when that happens, you really don't get a lot of movement uh, in terms of... uh, where we are in some more macro issues, there's really nothing new. We're just waiting on what the Fed says and seeing where we're going with it. Uh, in terms of sector basing the market today, um, with where we are, technology is down nearly a percent. Just looking at XLK, uh, we have uh, healthcare up a little bit, or healthcare is up on the day. Uh, but the big story of the day in terms of the sector is energy. Holy cow, we got XLE up just under 5% on the day. And so that is uh, the big story with the sector movers uh, in terms of where we're at with it. Oil itself back above the 80 mark. Uh, natural gas and looking at that, that is not following it though. Natural gas is actually down 4% on the day, down nine pennies, which is really not that big of a deal for natural gas. But uh, for the most part, with the exception of oil uh, going way up, uh, we have a couple of things that are moving a lot. But in general, on the macro level, um, it's kind of like that last day of school before Christmas break. You're really not, you're there, but you're really not there as a student or maybe even as a teacher, who knows? Uh, but it's, it kind of has the feeling of that today uh, within this marketplace. And I will turn it back over to Warrior Nation. Yes, Warrior Nation. It was Hulkamania or the power of the warrior to see which one was the strongest force in the WWF. Fun fact, WrestleMania six. Mary Tyler Moore was seen sitting ringside. So there you go. There's your trivia. For WrestleMania 6. Mr. Rock Lobster, what are your deep thoughts about Mary Tyler Moore loving herself some Hogan versus Warrior? B, if you have any thoughts about UFC and WWE getting together, kind of crazy. And then C, what's catching your eye in this weird trifurcated market, sir? <laughs> Just watching Mary Tyler Moore ringside at the wrestling event. What gets what gets better than that? I, I defy like, you to did, say something did better she than get that. Hulk Hogan sweat on her? Who knows? She was there for it. She loved it. Uh, that's that I, that's impressive okay again on my list of things to guess i would not have guessed mary tyler moore checking out the wrestlemania. <laughs> your defense you would have been low on my did, list did you know well. that liberace was involved in wrestlemania yes one. he was on the he was a ref wasn't he or a musician? he was the he was the special guest timekeeper timekeeper that's right that's right ali was a ref i think i, I think uh Li- liberace was such a uh entertaining figure i'm sure he did a fine job as a time and dressed for the occasion i'm sure Yes, not over the top at all. Not no. over the top at all. I, I could I could see Vince McMahon saying, who could I get that would be the most fabulous human being ringside to draw attention? Away? <laughs> By comparison, Mary Tyler Moore, far more down to earth than Liberace. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Different demographic entirely. Now, was Mary Tyler Moore ringing the bell or was she just? No, she, apparently she was just sitting at ringside. Ah, just sitting here as a, as a celebrity, no doubt. A celebrity, not. Um, so, uh, so I think the, I, I find it like, so I kind of think, it, you know, it's not like you, but it's almost like these guys kind of have a monopoly on sort of all the alternative live viewing stuff. They got right? combat sports and pay-per-view kind of locked up now. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I mean, obviously there's boxing and we all know how notoriously kind of corrupt boxing is. Um, uh, with the promoters and the whole, you know, uh, however that whole boxing thing works, I've never quite figured it out. Um, yeah, but I mean, they, it's a substantial, um, you know. And one thing is, one thing is clear: the wrestling franchise does not go away. Um, um, One hundred and sixty thousand people were at this WrestleMania combined over two nights this weekend. 
That's insane. So I, I'm just saying it's it's here to stay. Um, so I, I think actually the endeavor. I was trying to figure out the the uh, economics behind it, but the UFC like it's extremely popular. And I have no idea how they can af- they can afford this. They they're already servicing about a five billion dollar debt to buy the UFC a few years ago. Now they're going to add on more debt on top of it. I, I guess they have deeper uh, pockets than I thought. I, I guess so. And these are the Fertitta brothers, right? No, they used to own UFC. Then now it's uh, now it's but Endeavor. They sold it. Yes, they sold it. They sold it for okay. almost five billion. So they're sitting on five billion in cash. They're laughing all the way to the bank. Wow! Wow! That's a <laughs> that's a chunk. <laughs> um. But this, uh, as far as yeah, so it's I and I the stock was down a little bit. And I did see some volume come into uh, Endeavor as well today. It looks like somebody's trying to buy the dip with some calls, but I, I don't want to spoil the odd block if you have them in there. Um, <clears throat> so I think yeah, I think it's in, but it's you know that one thing that people it seems like that people pay for is the live stuff. <clears throat> I mean, what do they? You know, you think about how much you know all those football franchises and the NFL basketball and all that is, you know, people want to see the live and these guys, I mean, they got the live thing locked up. I, it almost feels like, you know, like in the early nineties, remember when McCaw cellular was buying up all the, uh, um, they were paying like $200, um, per pip or a hundred dollars per pip for, for, uh, potential cell phone customers in an area. Where I think the price of the maybe back then was like fifteen dollars or twenty dollars a person. Um, I know this sounds I'm kind of dating myself here, but they paid like double the rate. And everybody thought they were crazy, right? And you look nowadays and like one person's cell phone bill a month is a hundred and hundred and fifty two or whatever it is, right? And they were paying just for the rights to that, you know, to that potential cell phone person. I remember, was it a pip or a pick or something like that? And McCall Seller just bought all this stuff up um, and scooped the ton. God knows how much money that guy made. I know he made billions. And then he sold it to AT&T. Um, it kind of feels like something similar here where these guys are like, hey, live entertainment is the stuff people will pay for. And we're going to buy it all up. Um, so I, it's, it's, hard to, uh, it's, it's hard to argue with that, I guess. Um, but anyway, very, very interesting. Um, purchase and I, I and I think that's why they feel like they can uh um they can leverage the crap out of it, you know, because they they future cash flow and you know it survived the pandemic and all that kind of stuff. Um you know, so um anyway, that's <clears throat> that's what I see anyway on that. I don't I think they're probably a little ahead of the curve, which everybody thinks are crazy, but then all of a sudden they're like, wow, all of a sudden that's all people buy is, you know, is, um, is live action. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out, but it, it has that kind of a cost cellular feel from the, from the nineties and the eighties when they just bought all that stuff up and made freaking bank because they were there before everybody else. Um, now, uh, let's see here. As far as markets today, um, it's kind of weird because you know, all the oil stocks pop because, oh, surprise, oil can go up when OPEC decides. And, <laughs> and whatever happened to that Russian embargo, by the way, didn't work. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of like all the policies we've tried in the last year and if they're really working or not. Um, it's like if they can join the <laughs> the output cuts with the Saudis, I'm not quite sure what our <laughs> does seem to be a little bit of a, of a sieve there, that embargo. It, it does seem, well, I'm a little confused because, <laughs> because I know it sure was confusing for everybody else. <laughs> My favorite was when they tried to enact that price cap. Let's have a price cap on Russian oil. I was like, you, you do realize yeah, this is a right. freely traded global commodity, right? Yeah, it didn't work very well. No. And, I, and somehow now the price of natural gas is in the basement when supposedly Europe was running out of it again. Confusion <laughs> reigns supreme. Um, and I think, you know, we had a little bit of a, a pop in VIX this morning, but again, you got weekend effect, three day weekend coming up. Um, so none of that is, I think, out of the ordinary. Uh, I was just looking at vol per strike, and it's already even or down for the day now in the 30 day cycle. So, I mean, 
I, ever since the Fed threw six hundred billion dollars at the market, it seems to be doing okay. <laughs> because there's no more bank failures. I haven't heard anything about anything. You know, UBS brings back that you know that that old CEO, and all of a sudden everything just. I think we've gone straight up from there. Um, you know, and OPEC raising prices. You know, that's probably I think one thing is. They probably opened the oil floodgates because of the whole Russian thing, and they're probably realizing, wait a minute, we got maybe we have a little too much production out there, because uh, clearly the Russians are selling oil to somebody, right? The market basically thought the Russians wouldn't sell oil to anybody, and now you're a year later, and I'm quite sure the Russians are selling oil to somebody. Um, so the fact that they had a you know, uh, Firm up prices doesn't look hugely surprising. Tusa, have you been buying Russian oil again? I talked to you about this before. No, TD Ameritrade doesn't allow it. Ah, okay. I'm keeping, <laughs> I'm keeping an eye on you, sir. So anyway, and that's what we've got. And then we have so, and then you have the Q stocks, which apparently are partying like it's 1999 again, because I guess AI is going to save the world, um, but nobody can figure out who makes money selling AI? <laughs> I guess just Microsoft and NVIDIA apparently are the only two stocks. Is AI going to save the world or kill us all? I can't figure it out. Yeah. And so, and that's what we have. Um, and what I will note that is, you know, implied vol is in the short term is back to 18. We have a CPI number coming out on the 12th. And the there is not really a huge bid for vol. I mean, so I think coming into this week, like I think those those straddles are going to get down super cheap. I mean the the April the April twelve four ten straddle is still eight and a half dollars, and it's running at a, a slightly compressed sixteen and a half vol. So that's the you know, and then I guess that last number the market didn't do a whole lot either. So and we're we're getting to the point where the Fed is still raising rates, not as fast as usual. We have inflation; it wasn't as bad as last year. Um, it doesn't seem like it's getting, has gotten a whole lot better though in the last four months. It's kind of like the same-ish. Um, and if anybody is like goes to their grocery store and <laughs> try to figure that out, um, I, I think there are reasons for it, but, um, I will just, I will just leave those aside for right now. Uh, but as far as, you know, what we've got going on, um, I mean, you know, we're, it it feels like we just don't have another catastrophe that's like on the, that is on tap. I mean, we've had a years years of catastrophes, and this for the first time it's like okay, so the banking crisis was a thing, people holding some bonds, but you know it's not like they were holding bonds that are marked to zero. They're they're losing money, but not marked to zero like during the financial crisis. So that was you know the initial worry, and and the Fed allowed banks if they needed to raise capital to do so quickly and gave them very favorable terms for their holdings. So now I so I, I guess, you know, where where does the market go? Uh and I think Tucson, I think what was the old the old number was thirty nine hundred, I believe was the the magnet. I think was it thirty seven, then it went to thirty nine. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, um, it might be forty one now. But it might be 41 now, like because where where do we go without the next crisis? You know, like where's 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 the next? Uh, I don't I don't know. Okay, we're back to a regular market again, and um and VIX is probably fairly priced at 19. But I'm just looking at vols here, right? So 10 day vols 15, 20 day vol is 19, 30 day vol is 18, and 60 day vol is 17. So you know, VIX is not like too expensive for what's going on, um, but it's it's not the realized vol we had last year by any stretch. Like realized vol by a factor has come down quite a bit, maybe, you know, um, you know, eight, nine, ten points. I think the average was in the mid twenties last year. And now we're down into the high teens. So, just looking at how much the market's moving, it's less. And, you know, ultimately, less is less. So I don't know what kind of, uh, you know, and now they're arguing about the debt ceiling and, you know, how much money they, you know, they're basically arguing about how much money 
that we don't have can we spend, right? So they're borrowing it all anyway. So they're arguing about uh, how much they can spend of money they don't have. Uh, one guy wants to spend more. The other one guy wants to spend a little less. But in reality, they both want to spend money we don't have. So it's still uh, like the knucklehead sandwich running the country uh, from Congress to the White House. So we're, we're kind of in the same the same, the same boat. So I think, yeah, maybe 4,100. I was thinking more like 4,000 as as kind of our gravitational pull because it's the next big, big, big number. Um, But it sure doesn't feel like 3,500 anymore. And, and I think that's what we got. So it wouldn't surprise me to see VIX make a year low this week. Uh, If, you know, we shrug off the oil thing, we shrug off this, we shrug off the banks, like, okay. And I think the hard, the hardest thing now is, okay, what's the next catalyst? Because the queues have kind of done their thing. You know, you could get some catalyst out of the banks somehow if they get a bid. But for right now, um, like we need a new crisis. I guess that's all I can say. We just, we don't, I, I think we've kind of invented every crisis possible in the last three years, though, I have to say. Tusa, Mark, I don't know what you think. <laughs> like, God forbid we find one worse. <laughs> Cuz I tell you they've really they've gone out of their way to invent them the last 3 years. Now you have invoked the ire of the uh, of the market gods, sir. They will be bringing all their full wrath upon us. So thank you for that, sir. Yes. You have jinxed us all. By the way, while you were talking, I was looking up the details of this deal, this WWE UFC deal. First off, the new ticker is going to be TKO. I kind of like that. That kinda, that makes some sense. Uh, it's it's fifty one forty nine fifty one percent. So it is. They're calling it a merger. I don't see how this is a merger, but it's interesting nonetheless. Fifty one percent Endeavor, forty nine percent WWE. They're valuing WWE at nine point three. Vince was asking for nine. They went over at nine point three. That's that's pretty high. And then they're valuing Endeavor slash UFC at twelve point three. I believe twelve point one, which is also insane given the fact they just bought UFC a few years ago for a little over four billion. So. Uh, that's um, obviously Endeavor has more in it. There's professional bull riding and other stuff in there. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's a crazy high valuation. So we'll see how this this ticker TKO does when they launch it uh, later on here. It looks like both names are down right now. Endeavor and UFC or UFC and WWE both taking hits on this news. But yeah, that's uh, that's quite the valuation out there. Let's see what things are going on out there in the rest of the market. Let's start with the major indices. VIX. Actually looking respectable today, 474,000. So it's on pace. It could threaten its ADV of 886 today. We shall see that also ticking up since our last show a little bit, about 17,000 or so. So VIX threatening 900,000 contracts a day these days. That is that is nothing to sneeze at, listeners. SPY, 5.3 million. The ADV, 9.6 million. You don't need me to tell you that SPY puts up numbers. Uh, the S, 1.5 million. It's actually kind of light. We're starting to expect about 2 million contracts by this time of the day right now. If not... We look askance at S, which at the S, which is kind of just crazy town these days. This shows what a weird environment we're in. Uh, small caps, 504,000 on the tape for IWM. One and a quarter million is the ADV. Man, that is, that is a lot of volume for IWM and historically not really been sustainable, but it's been north of a million for at least a few weeks now. So we'll see how long I can keep it up. And the Q's 1.6 million, the ADV three and a quarter million. So that keeps going north as well. That's been hanging out at three million for a long time. Now three and a quarter. Let's go out to the single names listeners, see what's lighting it up outside of WWE slash UFC slash TKO. And number 10, we're going out to China. By the way, it cost you 207,000 contracts today to break into the top 10. So a bit of a day where the single names are getting a little bit pushed to the wayside here. And it's Alibaba coming in at number 10 with 207,000 contracts, trading 98 and a quarter right now, off nearly four bucks. So apparently all is not right with China again after having a nice run up over the last week here for Alibaba coming off a little bit today. Uh, actually, we have a tie for number 10 slash 9, because also at number 9, also at 207,000 contracts, is good old Softy. Softy getting hit today. I said the NASDAQ's taking a beating today. Off three and a third for, Na- excuse me, for Microsoft, trading at 285 even right now, off a little over 1%. Again, good for 207,000 contracts. Uh, number 8, right behind it, it's new AI rival. It's Google, 210,000 contracts here, a.k.a. Alphabet, of course. A 103.15 is where it's trading right now, off about 60 cents. So not a huge day for good old Google L. Number seven, back to Contagion Fairs, listeners. It's Bank of America, 28.5, off about 11 cents today. 
So not a huge day for them. They've had a range of about 29 on the upside and about 28 and a third on the dark side. So about a two thirds of a point range out there. Good for 232,000 contracts today. Uh, number six, AMC, they had their own interesting uh, takeover rumors floating around out there. Will they, won't they? Amazon, Amazon buying AMC. Does that make sense? Listeners, what are they going to do? Put out their Amazon exclusive content into theaters. Are more people going to see rings of power as a result? I, I think not, but hey, we've heard crazier rumors. AMC kind of unched right now, not really having a rocking day, which is kind of unusual for AMC if it's going to be in our top 10. But nonetheless, it's there. AMC number six, 255,000. Let's look really quickly and see what the heck people are up to out there. That's bringing it into our top 10 today. 38,000 of the five half calls going out this week, listeners. That's the big dog out there. So somebody, somebody is on the war path here for the five half calls. What are they up to? They bought 2,500 of them for 16 cents. They've been trading all 15 cents. So it's like mostly buys. Most of them leaning towards the buy side. Yeah, it's all opening paper. Nearly 40,000 of the five half calls going out this week. So maybe some folks. Thinking that Amazon news is coming down this week. Either way, there's some size on the five half strike listeners. What are your thoughts there as we keep on rolling to number five? We got our symbol twins back. We have AMC. How about one letter higher? Let's go to AMD listeners. Number five, 268,000 contracts. AMD trading 95 and a quarter off about two and three quarters. So chip stocks can sell off apparently. And today apparently is the day. Again, good for 268,000. Again, we're already at number five. We're only at 260. It kind of shows you what kind of a light day it is, listeners. Number five, staying in the chip zone with NVIDIA. I haven't seen these two back to back for a while. I'm sure number four is NVIDIA. 399,000 contracts on the tape for an NVIDIA. 274, 74 right now, off about three bucks on the day. Again, good for 399,000. Number three, potentially the suitor for AMC. This is Amazon. Coming in at 406,000 contracts, trading a little bit sh- little bit south, I should say, of 102 right now, 101.90, off about a buck 40 on the day or so. Again, good for 406,000 contracts. Number two, holding down the silver crown, as is its want these days. It is Apple, 579,000 contracts, trading 164 and three quarters right now, off not even 20 cents, about 18 cents. So not a huge day. For Apple, they had a high of about 165.89 and a low of 164 and a quarter. So they have done a little bit more living, kind of hanging out close to unched right now. Again, good for 579,000. And the number one, the big dog, extending its lead again today, Tesla, closing in on 2 million contracts, 1.94 million contracts. Tesla taking a bit of a drubbing off 14 and a quarter or nearly 7%, trading 193 and a quarter. That's on the heels of some good news to start the session. They delivered more, more vehicles recently than on the heels of that massive price cut than anyone expected so they were actually they were actually rallying about three handles earlier in the session up to about 20270 uh, then they came for it and have crushed it down about 10 handles from there so yeah record q1 deliveries but uh, apparently that's not enough to stem the bleeding out there tesla they're coming for it. obviously still well north of their nadir of 10181 for the year that wasn't that long ago everyone had written the death knell the epitaph for tesla Apparently, reports of their death were premature. Not a ton on the earnings front, so instead we'll keep on rolling listeners right on into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for the odd block. All right, everybody, let's get weird. Let's get wild. Let's pay off some crazy paper. Let's start going back to last Thursday's show. We had the Flowmaster on, and he brought up some very interesting, very near-dated paper. We discussed it. We analyzed it. We paid it off with Mr. Matt Amberson from ORATS on our Options Oddity show on Friday. But I wanted to kind of discuss it here, too, because it was brought up on the odd block after all. So if you're not on the pro, I want you to be able to hear it as well. Uh, this is, of course, Carvana, ticker symbol C V N A. Trading right now. Well, I'll get there in a second. We'll get to that story in a second. A year ago, Carvana, we know the deal. 133, just a ridiculous name. Uh, then they just came for it and annihilated it. It was trading. That was in April. By May, it was trading $30. So they took $100 right off the top in the span of a month. Man, they came for Carvana. 
And then the rest of the year kind of just making its way down. Hit its nadir, actually, back at the beginning of the year. Well, right around three and a half bucks. So right now, trading north of that. So that's good. Back on Friday, listeners, or actually Thursday of last week, we were talking with the Flowmaster, and he highlighted some interesting trading going up on the March 9s. In particular, about 14,500 of the March 9s. And these were the end of month March, end of week. So these are the expiring on Friday. So this was a one-day swing for the upside fences. The stock, when he first started noticing them, was around 860. So this thing really needed to move. They were paying around 17 cents for these bad boys. So they were uh, they were looking for a pop. And guess what, listeners? They got their freaking pop. <laughs> Carvana hit 979 on Friday, listeners. So it popped over a dollar. So these folks bought their lottery tickets. They scratched them off. And gosh darn it, if they didn't hit the jackpot here, these things shot up. Maybe they knew something. I don't know. Go figure. I don't really know what the news was that drove it. But uh, nonetheless, <laughs> uh, some home car delivery legislation. Oh, passed Illinois State Senate. I know there were some problems at Illinois. Maybe somebody playing the uh, the old state Senate game. Oh, the notion that the Illinois State Senate is corrupt. How how dare I say such a thing out loud? All right. Let's <laughs> let's go around the horn. So, yeah, they the funny thing. And now, Mr. Rock Lobster, stop me if you heard this one. You buy some crazy near-dated calls. You need the thing to rip almost instantaneously, right? The thing rips. You get your home run. And then you do a whopping nothing. Does that sound familiar to you, sir? <laughs> I like to say it doesn't, but sometimes uh, you just buy the wrong calls. But, oh, my gosh. They bought the right ones, and they still did nothing. Well, I don't say I shouldn't say nothing. They bought about four, about fourteen thousand five hundred traded on Thursday. A total of around five thousand traded on Friday. So someone could have taken some of these off, but not enough, sir. Yeah, but I mean, they got they got what like a six X or five X. <laughs> they got a huge winner. I know this is a banger of bangers, and they did uh, nothing. You know, maybe they maybe they shorted uh you know one point four million. <laughs> you sound like Matt trying to come up with some sort of charitable and oh maybe they were gamma. <laughs> yeah, sure. These are the most depth gamma scalpers on the planet, and they bought it all just for the gamma, sir. I, I yeah, and you're like, and then uh, you were like, no. <laughs> the deep cynicism in me says no to that, sir. Says no chance in holy hecamony. Yes. So. So, yeah, they um, bought them. They got their home run and they let it pretty much slip through their fingers, sir. That's that's almost more frustrating than buying them and having them just go away. Yeah, I I, I have to say, uh, as one who has bought options, <laughs> watch the green tick on the screen and then was the greediest pig. Uh <laughs> Uh, uh, this side of, um, uh, Charlotte's web, I guess is the only pig I can think of. Um, yes. So, you know what? Ultimately when you buy options, you got to be ready to sell them. And if you don't, <laughs> you're going to be in trouble. Especially when you buy them with like 24 hours to go. Then you have no excuse. Cause it's, it's defined in the outset of the trade. You have a limited time to make this thing happen. <laughs> yeah. You got to bail. I don't, I, it's kind of a, <laughs> I, I just I'm trying to be I guess the flow master or no Matt was being charitable but like wow I mean you're in it for 17 cents and they're <laughs> you got a and you got a five xer on your hands it, you know <laughs> holy gosh <laughs> congratulations you bought a whole bunch of stock at 917 the stock's 922 now so awesome well done well done for you yep. a whole bunch of nothing it's... <laughs> I just it saddens me. And I've missed a lot of trades in the past, too, taking things off. That's usually because I'm doing shows. So maybe these people are out there doing their great shows and they forgot to take off their nearly 15,000. Well, I have to say that that takes buying 1,450 contracts, 14,500 contracts, and then like doing something else. That's a level of cavalier that is, that is impressive. I'm busy having lunch. I'll get to those calls later. Like, oh, I'm, I'm on my eighth bottle of Petru. I can't, Petru's. I can't, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't close my calls I can't now. be it's bothered really, to take my it's profits. It's only a milli for me. I can't be bothered. Who could, Actually, it was quite a bit more than it was, that. It was, it was like 8 million bucks. It was a good chunk of, well, I'll have to see what the, yeah, the apex was around, what I say, 979, so. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. That's that's that's, that's not a small that's not 
So yeah, you got 1.4 million contracts times 60 cents. So no, it's like 650,000 bucks they didn't make. Yeah, you know, he was busy. The guy was busy doing something else. He's like, ah, it's just, you know, the girlfriend doesn't get a new Ferrari this week. That's that's basically they could get a couple of Lambos with that money. I mean, that they're not messing yeah, around. It's like real money. His and hers Lambos. And alas, no. Now they get a Yugo, maybe. <laughs> uh, they still make Yugos. I don't even know. That's old school. All right, let's keep on rolling. Let's go out. How about this one, Mr. Rockcaster? How about some contagion fears? Have you heard of this? It's all the rage. Uh, I believe there's I have that that word has that. That phrase has been bandied about somewhere. Let's see what we got here. We're going out to New York Community Bank Corp. So going back to the regional banks, listeners, what's the worst that could happen out in this sector? Uh, trading 867 off about a third of a point today. On the year, year ago is trading 1062, so almost exactly two bucks higher. And this one's had a choppy road. It got down to 865, so pretty much exactly where it is right now on June 17th. Then they rallied again August 17th. So like Right around numbers all happening on the 17th out here. August 17th got up to 10, almost 11 bucks. But then right back down again on October 17th, got a little bit, about eight and a half bucks. And then uh, flirted with 10 again a couple of times at 1041 on February 2nd. Then we all know what's happened over the last month. They came for this thing. I got down to 640, actually hit 581 inch, excuse me, intraday. That was on March 13th. Since then, it has rallied impressively back up to 919 and hanging out at 867, 866 today. They're coming for it a little bit today. And it seems like somebody, Mr. Rock Lobster, thinks that dip last time was overdone. And they're going to draw their line in the sand out here pretty sizably as well of 25,243 of the May 8 puts. They say, you know what? Eight strike this far, no farther. And I'm going to sell those for 30 cents. That is a about a 48 vol, 47 vol. The stock was eight and three quarters, so a little bit higher when they sold these earlier this morning. Worth noting, there are earnings in this on April 26, so that could come back to bite them potentially. Then someone liked them. They did about 5,000 more, so a total of about 30,000 of these have gone up today now, Mr. Rock Lobster. So a pretty sizable line in the sand saying, you know what, I'll take all your New York Bank Corp at 770, sir. What you got? That's uh, that's not nothing. That's a pretty good. Uh, I would say that's a pretty good line in the sand. Put wouldn't you? Not not unsubstantial. Um, and I and what's weird? Well, I you know what another thing is. That is a fairly juicy put for the line in the sand. Uh, people to sell. To be quite honest. Yeah, it's not think? bad. It's not bad. Um. I I actually added an EDR to my watch list now of uh, interesting stocks. Uh, it will be the irony of ironies if I become an investor in that guy. I, I, <laughs> uh, I just I just I realized who the CEO was. Yeah, so this is like so. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty juicy put to sell. I mean, you know, they usually don't get this kind of premium, but they're. But they're they're totally going for it. They're like, okay, they're fading the whole they're fading the whole enchilada on this right now, is what it appears to be, from what I can tell. So it's just like, hey, uh, I, I think the whole banking thing is toast, and New York's Community Bank Corp is still going to be around, and that's the bottom line on that one. All right, let's keep on rolling because we got to get Uncle Mike on here too. So we'll go through our last one really quickly. Uh, cheapy gold names have been all the rage out here. We've talked about them a lot on the show recently. Today's victim is Alamos Gold, ticker symbol AGI, trading 12 and a half bucks right now, up about a quarter. Uh, on the year, a year ago, they were trading 869. So they're pretty much right at their 52 week high right now. A little bit off of it is 1269. So they're pretty much at their apex right now. Makes sense. We've all seen what's going on in gold. And Mr. Rock Lobster, it seems like someone is thinking this party can't continue. We saw a big block of 10,000 of the June 17 half. So $5 out of the money calls listeners going up for 15 cents, kind of splitting in the uprights. They were a dime at 20, a total of nearly 30,000 have traded on the day. I have not had a chance to go through and parse all these, maybe some of the earlier prints. Maybe this was an overwrite off the go dig in and see, but we'll have some time to get to these. Meanwhile, though, we got to get some time for uncle Mike because it's time for the strategy block. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for The Strategy Block. 
All right, listeners, time for some options, wit and or wisdom, courtesy of Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike, you got about eight minutes, sir, to regale us with why you think TKO is going to be your favorite stock of all time. Go. (laughs) I'm actually going to go a totally different route today. Uh, It is tax season right now. Um, The tax deadline is upon us in the next couple of weeks. And so I want to talk about taxes today. Uh, First off, uh, if you have not made a contribution to your Roth IRA or your IRA for 2022, there is still time to do so. Uh, Contact your broker, your bank, or wherever you're housing your IRA to see what needs to be done with that. But uh, I would do it sooner rather than later because... If you wait another week or so, I can just tell you from firsthand experience dealing with brokers uh, right before the IRA deadline, uh, it can uh, get, it's a very long line for last minute people. So I would highly recommend doing that right now. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about is I want to tell you guys about something that you may or may not have ever heard of. And just, I'll just do a quick little uh, host survey here. Uh, with Mark and Andrew, have you ever heard the term enrolled agent before? Doesn't roll off the top of my head, sir. No. How about I, you, Andrew? I do not, sir. I've not heard. All of right. It. So, I, and I'll be honest, I had not heard of it either until about a year ago. And so, what I I did some research on it, and what an enrolled agent is, it is the highest credential with which the IRS offers. And so, what I decided was that. As a financial advisor, you're technically not allowed to give tax advice, but yet you do give tax advice by telling someone the benefits and drawbacks of a Roth IRA versus a traditional IRA and that type of thing. And then you talk with compliance, this, that, and the other. So what I decided to do over the course of the last year is uh, I decided to become an enrolled agent, and I am one now. And so what an enrolled agent does is he actually has the same power as which an, a, a CPA does from a tax standpoint in that I can represent people before the IRS if they want, if I, if I want, if they get audited and they need representation before, before the IRS, I can now do that. Now, is it my intention to become a tax guy? No, not at all. Uh, I don't really want to change much in terms of my practice, but what I do want to do is have it to where if I'm telling somebody you should put your money in a Roth versus a traditional, traditional versus Roth. You should shelter your money this, that way, the other, whatever. I don't want to have to say the traditional financial advisor disclosure. Well, I can't give tax advice, but this says, and I'm tired of doing that. So um, 20 years of practice in the books. And what I've decided to do is I'm just going to now say, this is what it's going to be. And yes, I can give tax advice legally because I am an enrolled agent, the highest credential with which the IRS offers. So as a little bit of homework, uh, Google search enrolled agent, go to the IRS website, uh, see what one is, because uh, as of uh, roughly the last few weeks, I am now credentialed as an enrolled agent that you now have as a host on the option block. What you're Options sa- and taxes, <laughs> baby, let's do this. So what you're saying is I have to start calling you Agent Mike now? That would be kind of cool. Agent it? Tusa. Oh, huh? that's got a decent ring to it. Get your little suit going. Get some uh, spy glasses. I don't know. What do you think? Think you can pull it off? I would love to. I mean, I'm not looking to do people's taxes and be a tax preparer by any means. I never want to do that as long as I live. However, if someone does want to ask me, Roth versus traditional, what is this estate? How would this affect my estate? This, that, or the other, the thing that... Most other financial advisors under the sun have to say, well, I can't give tax advice. Screw it. I can give all the tax advice I want. But if it's about (laughs) returning it, but if it's about uh, this line on your tax versus a deduction versus the other, my answer is still going to be a resounding I don't know. But in terms of financial planning, uh, taxes are now a big part of what I do. And I can give all the advice I want on them and not have to say that silly disclosure that most financial advisors do have to say. I like it. Uncle Mike just said screw it, which is about as close to swearing. As he gets here, listen. But I like that. So now, the, uh, whenever people ask us task questions, I always have to say, "Well, we're not CPAs." I don't have to give that disclaimer anymore. I can just say, "Talk to Uncle Mike. Talk to Agent Tucson." <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and the answer will still likely be, "I don't know if it's something obscure, but I'll do my best, and I can find out." I like that, Agent Tucson. As we keep on rolling, right on into around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block.
All right. Let's tell you what we're watching till our next episode on Thursday. First off, Mr. Rock Lobster, do you have any upcoming credentials we should be aware of? Are you too becoming a secret agent? And then B, what are you keeping an eye on until our episode on Thursday? Um, I, I, I do have a reg- I am a registered investment advisor, although I do not exercise that that task anymore. It is a it is a quiet thing. Um, um, and I and I probably had ever taken every series test. They're like series uh, <laughs> series seven sixty. I don't know, golly jeepers, all those things. Uh, way back way back when. Um, then I just like, wow, trading is a lot easier than having to do what Tucson does all the time. I've decided. Um, but uh, any, as far as anything going on, what's I just, you know, do we just do we end up with a kind of a quiet week and a low print for vol? I don't think we've I don't think we've had it ever, to be quite honest. Not ever. But like in 2023, where we just have a week that we just vol sinks without some other calamity. So. I mean, I hate to be gloom and doomy. I don't think we're going to have a calamity. Um, I hope we don't have one, but it's kind of be interesting to see if we can go go through the whole week without one. That will be interesting. Of course, a truncated holiday week. No shows on Friday, listeners. Mr. Uncle Mike, I should say Agent Tucson. What are you keeping an eye on until the Thursday show? I think we are going to have a boring week. Uh, we could get a catastrophe. You never know. But uh, just continuing to watch what uh, appears to be the 4100 magnet now. Uh, as Andrew Reed declared, uh, so with the, this 4100, that'll be Andrew's magnet. I claimed 3900. Um, eventually it broke, but uh, we'll watch the Andrew magnet for this week. All right, listeners, that music means we've come to the end of at least this sojourn through the world of all things options. If you want more content, a little surprise bonus for all you cool cats in the secret club, I'm coming at you immediately on the heels of this show. No waiting, no rest for the wicked right into crypto rundown immediately after this listener so stay tuned for that of course uh, all you on demand folks you'll get it when it hits the network a little bit later on but before we go let's go back around the horn let's start with the rockingest of lobsters mr rock lobster sir if folks want to reach out to you with their own tax questions where should they go what should they do uh, yeah, go to uh, optionpit.com or our uh, Money Map Press for all of my products there. If you want to learn how to trade options, uh, work long term options against stock, um, trade VIX, trade weekly options, uh, learn how to be a professional option trader where you uh, basically use it as an income, a uh, way to make income. Um, you know, any and all of the above, we've been doing it at Option Pit for 11 years now, and I'm hopefully we'll be doing it for another 11 or 12. And, you know, until I'm too old, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do because I can't make a living cutting wood. So might as well do this. There you go. And Agent Tussar, or as the cool kids call you, Agent T. What's up with you, sir? <laughs> well, if you have questions on your tax returns, don't call me. But if you have questions on your tax planning and how you want to be positioned for the long term, feel free to give me a call. Check my, check out my website, stcharleswealth.com, or follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusaw. What if I have some tax questions about crypto? What does Agent T say about that? And you refer to my other website, which I'll neglect to mention. <laughs> all right, check them out. You too can see all the content flowing from Agent T over there. Uh, the place to start, stcharleswealth.com is the place to go. Or give him a follow on Twitter, at Mike Tussaw, T-O-S-A-W. All one more. That's going to do it for this show. Back again immediately for crypto after this. Back again with our usual slew of content throughout the rest of the week. I will be beaming in on the Thursday episode, but we'll see you then. Another episode of The Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, 
facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com.